Hey, Bo, Ross goes after us again. Oh, man, I wonder what we did this time. I don't really feel like finding out. Let's just lose him. All right, well, here comes a shortcut, I know. You know Watkins Bridge is still out up here. Oh, come on. You know the general can make it. Well, I sure hope you did your calculations right this time, or this is going to hurt. The Duke boys could be in some trouble here if their calculations aren't correct. Well, we know where every jump in Hazard County is, and I'm sure as heck that the General Lee can make 90% of them. But I just don't know if I want to risk leaping the Watkins Bridge. You're right about that. I mean, I know what we can do. Let's use our dynamics equations to figure it out. Well, what did Dr. Kellum teach us? Yeah. Well, class, today we're going to explore, explore problem 269, where we can see that all objects with an initial VO undergoing constant acceleration undergo a parabolic motion. So as long as we know delta x and VO using this guiding equation, we can certainly find delta t giving us I don't remember, and I know you don't remember, because you were sleeping the whole time. Because you were too, but I still don't want to risk it. Well, maybe one of these books will have something useful in it. Luke, this is pointless. I just read a paragraph where T stood for kinetic and U apostrophe stood for the change in potential. I mean, this makes no sense. What kind of jerk would write a textbook like this? I hear you, cuz. We aren't ever gonna figure this out. Hey guys, what y'all up to? How you doing, Cooter? Hey look, I just got my dynamics test back. It's how'd y'all do? Oh, well, not so good. What you boys working on? Well, Cooter, we need to know if we can get the General Lee to jump the Watkins Bridge. But we just don't know how to do the calculations. Oh, it's, it's easy. You just have to do this. Alright guys, so what you do, you have your velocity here. You change it in the two different uh, different vectors for your y velocity and your x velocity. Then you take your y velocity and plug it into your kinematics equation of v equals a velocity equals uh, initial velocity plus acceleration times the change in time. And then another equation down here we have was x equals our uh, position equals um, the initial position position plus your your velocity times t plus your acceleration over two times t squared. And your acceleration in the y direction, this, this, I mean, for your x direction, is equal to zero. So that cancels out, and, and you, you end up with this. And when you set the two t equals together, you can get an x minus x naught over v x equals v y over a. And then you know your difference of what v a v y equals v sine theta, and then v x will equal v cosine theta. And then you just solve for your thetas, and you, you solve for your thetas, and you can get. You, you know your thetas, you solve for your v's, and you can find the velocity of how fast you gotta go. Did you boys get that? Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, I guess, I guess I'll just start back from the top. That would probably be good. Yeah. Well, now that we know how to do the calculations, we need to test it somehow. Yeah, maybe we should perform a scaled down experiment to get a good idea of what we really need to do with the general. Yeah, we'll get Uncle Jesse's remote control car I and mean, see how fast it goes. Let's get to work. Now, Luke, how exactly do we plan on calculating all this for our scaled down experiment? Well, we'll use the video camera to analyze the motion of the RC car as it makes the jump, and then we'll use our dynamics equations to figure out what we have to do in our real car. All right. Cooter, did you bring Uncle Jesse's remote control car? Of course I did. Is this still wrong? I can't believe this thing still works. <laughs> sure, it's a good thing we found Daisy's Hot Wheel cars used as a replica for jumping the General Lee. Yeah, especially since we broke Uncle Jesse's remote control car. <laughs> So, Cooter, explain to us how we're going to use this to jump the general. All right, so like we uh, showed you um, earlier, we have the kinematics equations for uh, constant acceleration. And we have it, We you, the two we'll use is the, the one for a constant acceleration and uh, change in velocity and with, with the change in time. 
and the other one would be change in um, uh, change of position with change in time. So when we ever, whenever we get we plug in the numbers the, for, for the change of velocity with respect to time, we'll use our vertical vertical velocity that we have, and that'll be halfway across our arc. Um, and so when we end up, and once we, we'll get that in terms of just t, and so and then we'll use our position, uh, our position kinematics equation to use um, for our initial. We use our initial um, position and our final position and our change of time, and we get that in terms of time, and we have a velocity, and we ha and we don't have to worry about the acceleration term because our acceleration is zero since we're once we fly through the air, we're not doing any acceler in acceleration. And so then when we plug them all, we can plug those two back together like we showed you, um, like I showed you before whenever y'all are sleeping. And uh, but we ha what we have to remember is that our uh, our vertical time is only half the time of the distance because it's only half the arc. And so we'll multiply that that by two and plug that in for our equation for t. What exactly are these dimensions of the jump that you're trying to do? All right. Well, from pavement to pavement, we've got 75 feet. And the road left an angle of 18 degrees. 18 degrees. And so when we plug that all in, we get uh, six. We'll get a 65 feet per second. And then when we transfer that over to uh, miles per hour, and just uh, multiply that by uh, uh, three three thousand six hundred divided by five thousand two hundred eighty. For our conversion factor, and then we get uh, 45 miles per hour, and that will y'all be able to travel the uh, 75 the 75 feet from the bridge from each side of the bridge. Does that work for you? All right, now we can go take this. We can go make a replica of this jump and use and jump the replica generally on it just to make sure and test our calculation, make sure it works right. All right. All right. All right let's go. Here we built a scaled down model of the actual ramp. By marking evenly spaced partitions on the ramp and using the video camera to determine the amount of time it took the car to cross them, we were able to come up with the initial velocity as the car left the ramp. Since we didn't take wind resistance into account in our calculations, the numbers weren't exact, however they were relatively close. Bo, are you sure you did this right? I don't want to end up in Bear Creek dead. Luke, don't worry. I know how fast we should be going from our projectile motion equations. Bo, I know you and equations. You can't do two plus two. Well, don't worry, cuz. With Cooter's help, I got this one figured out. Oh, well, here we go. Wave goodbye to Roscoe. 